showtime. Ladies and gentlemen, please make your way to your seats. Showtime. Please make your way to your seats. The show is about to begin. Showtime. Let the magic begin. Turquoise hydrogen. Is it the end of hydrogen as we know it or what's going on? So, yeah, I so when I first read this, I'm like, what the F is turquoise hydrogen and why are we talking about it? What is and and so, yeah, so turquoise hydrogen, it's weird. Um, this article it kind of misleads you um, because, I, again, I don't I don't think that turquoise hydrogen is the, is the end all solution, but let's dive into it. It's produced from methane pyrolysis, which is splitting natural gas into hydrogen and solid carbon at high temperatures. So right there, I'm thinking lots of energy to produce this, right? But it's considered zero emission since no CO2 is released, unlike standard blue hydrogen production. So turquoise hydrogen combines the advantages, apparently, of green hydrogen's eight zero emission and blue hydrogen's use of natural gas infrastructure. So in this article, they're saying early cost estimates show it could be cheaper than other forms of hydrogen production. But it's weird because when you talk about methane pyrolysis, you need to reach temperatures of 1300 degrees Celsius. And that requires specialized reactors like nickel-based alloys, which adds a lot of complexity, right? Um, the thing is, too, is the solid carbon byproduct is mostly pure carbon black, which it does have established uses, but it but you need sufficient demand for that, right? So... Even at scale, turquoise hydrogen still relies on natural gas. So we're we're still not using a renewable uh, um, uh, a renewable source, right? So um, yeah, there, there's I, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm curious to see where they're going to go with this, but um, they're going to need pilot plants. They're going to need major infrastructure pipelines, just just like hydrogen as well. But um, uh, what they're saying is it does boast affordability and zero emission potential, but I don't know. Uh, I, it, to me, it doesn't pass the the sniff test. Yeah, I'm curious. How does this compare to? And I'm going to get the name wrong. We talked about it a couple of weeks ago. I got it wrong when I was looking at it. I'm going to say taurine or the um, uh, the simplified, the new version of hydrogen. Move aside hydrogen. We've got this new um, version coming. And you gotta it's it was created a different way. And I'm sorry, I can't remember the name. Otherwise, I'm talking out of my yeah, head I, here. Oh. I don't know, but I, I could talk about how it compares to other fuels. Yeah, that'd be uh, great. But I don't know specifically, yeah, about taurine. Um, so versus green hydrogen, it's it's cheaper. So uh turquoise hydrogen is cheaper due to lower electricity input costs, which doesn't make sense to me if you need a reactor. Um, but green hydrogen has a more renewable footprint by using solar and wind electricity rather than natural gas, which I love. Green hydrogen is mine, is my go-to. Um, blue hydrogen versus blue hydrogen, turquoise avoids the need for carbon capture and storage associated with blue hydrogen, which makes it potentially cheaper. But blue hydrogen is way further along commercially. Um, if we're talking about versus biofuels, so it benefits from leveraging existing natural gas infrastructure, but some biofuels can utilize current. It can be utilized in current engines and motors with fewer modifications. Uh, if we're talking about versus electrification, obviously it provides an alternative to direct battery uh, electrification. And, and so this is good for long truck hauling trains, things like that. Um, so they're saying it's cost competitive. Uh, there's an infrastructure advantage and decarbonization potential makes it appealing. But I just I, I can't get on board with with this based on the and maybe it's just me not understanding. Uh, and I did do a little bit of a dive into the the reaction and what reactions occur and how to produce that. But like using a reactor just seems to me like why and natural gas, too. Yeah, that it. <laughs> As soon as you're talking about something that is uh, that kind of temperature, you're talking about significant energy, but maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'm missing something. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'm missing something. So uh, like, it, like just to, to dive into it a little bit, the process involves exposing natural gas to very high temperatures to split it into car. So 
um, it's it's um, it's just it, it just it, it just baffles me as to as to why they're exploring this with such uh, because of, of of what's needed to to produce it uh, when there are I think uh, blue and and green hydrogen green hydrogen is my favorite a much better potential. Well, maybe it's because of the natural gas infrastructure that we have that um, allows almost anywhere um, a plant to be built or someone that can convert the natural gas to hydrogen because instead of shipping the hydrogen around, you're just shipping the natural gas, which we know how to do. For sure. Yeah. And um, this was the article I was talking about, Tau Onium. I'm sure, I, like I said, I think I spelled, uh, I spelled Onium. it. Onium, yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, mentioned it wrong. And that's looking like a future uh, potential hydrogen replacement. But it's, again, a, a future thing where what we're talking about here is it's just a new way of creating hydrogen. Yes. Yeah. A new, I wouldn't say efficient way, but that's what this article says. So, um, well, it's interesting to see this and compare it to, say, the Toyota's ammonia engine. Um, yeah. And to see how they're okay, they're using ammonia, you're using natural gas, uh, other people using different things to create hydrogen. I like that we're coming at it from different angles, but I'm not sure um, how green or, you know, I guess it's not when it's blue hydrogen, uh, what the impact is when you're using natural gas. Yeah. And it seems like, speaking of uh, the ammonia, it seems like Toyota is going deeper into that. So, um, it seems like they're not all in, but they're 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 putting more of their chips into that ammonia engine. So it's really interesting to see. Um, I still think uh, I still think green hydrogen is the way to go. Uh, you can create it from electrolysis, so you don't need any other fuels. You just need electricity and water. So oh, and metal obviously to to create the the reaction. But yeah, and we're seeing more and more uh, advances in the whole hydrogen space. So it won't be too uh, long i would see as we start to see a major migration unless we see a change in technology uh or a new know something come along they have to they have to bet on a horse and yeah. put some infrastructure in place because it's billions of dollars of infrastructure you gotta put down and you can't be changing every six months because something new's come out <laughs> so, yeah this is a great technology i i like where we're going i'm um curious as to all the new forms of our new sources of hydrogen we're going to get and uh i'm, I'm curious yeah. i'm waiting to see more and more of these in our area and i we have to see those hydrogen prices come down for sure yeah well as new new technology and and advances get uh, get developed and i think i think we're going to get there but i think uh i, I and yeah, I, I honestly think this is the, the fuel of the future for sure. I don't know what color hydrogen, but something's going to be. Definitely. So what do you got going on outside of this, John? Yeah, so one thing I didn't send you the link to, but I'm getting involved in um, in uh, this uh, in, in a film film production. So uh, we've got the Monarch production that, that I'm getting involved in separate from tech, which is really cool. Um, so we've got a few films with a couple big name actors that we're working on, which is kind of interesting, something different, but what I just signed up for this week is I will be, um, uh, next month I've signed up to get certified for skydiving, which means I do ground school and then I do about 10 different types of dives and then I get certified. So, uh, how long, when is this taking place? Sorry. July. End of July, closer to the end of July. So everybody watching this, um, I probably by mid to end August, I'll be looking for a new co-host. <laughs> so, you know, message me. Yeah. 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 So we'll have to see. Yeah. It sounds like fun, but uh, it's not my type of fun. No. Yeah. It's like a pre midlife crisis. I don't know. Um, I just figured, what the hell? Might as well um i've done it once i did it when i did it for charity raised money and, and did it and i loved it and uh yeah i'm gonna have to get myself a gopro though before i do it so i can capture all the jumps and everything yeah definitely and those te that technology is definitely coming along uh 
uh, quite a bit. So those, those GoPros yeah. are are better and better all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. What do you have going on? Well, we generally, I be launching my core, our big uh, course launch program in the next three weeks. Um, awesome. We're just finalizing it now. Our next big live in-person event is the Futures After Party on August 13th. But we are doing a few webinars between now and then. Uh, on July 10th, we're doing um, one on objection handling for startups, like how most of the people don't have an idea of how to handle objections, don't have an objection handling sheet. They don't have any of this stuff. And hopefully we'll go through some live objection handling, what people are experiencing then, which will be interesting, among other things. So look for those webinars. Look for all our upcoming stuff on torontostarts.com. And I think that's all I'm going to push cool. today. Go to uh, torontostarts.com to get our Future Tech podcast where all this comes out or check out the Toronto Starts YouTube channel.